Hi. Now in this video, what I want to show you is how we go about solving three simultaneous linear equations in the variables x, y, and z that have a unique solution. From a geometrical perspective, it's where three planes would intersect one another, okay, at a unique point. And as you can see, I've got two examples here. And we're going to be solving these by using a matrix approach. And I'll also be showing you how to use a Casio ClassWiz calculator to do this. But you may also find that any modern scientific calculator has operations that would handle matrix calculations. So how do we go about doing this? Well, I'm going to show you how we solve this then. And you've got another example here that you might like to try later. You might even want to pause the video at this stage just to have a go at this one if you're already familiar with this method. But from a matrix perspective, what we need to do is set this up as a matrix equation. And we can do that like this, okay? What I've done is I've written the coefficients of x, y, and z for each of the equations in this first matrix here. So you can see 3, negative 5, 4, 3, negative 5, 4, 4, 3, minus 2, 4, 3, minus 2, and 2, minus 6, 5, 2, minus 6, 5, for x, y, and z. And we write x, y, and z as a column vector here, so that when you multiply these two matrices out, you will get this block in here. And you can see that it's equal to the results we've got here, 23 minus 1 and 25, okay? So this is the matrix representation of these three equations. Now I'm just going to give you a little bit of theory here, which you might know, and that is the method of solving this set of equations. And what I've got here is I've called A this block here, okay? The coefficients of x, y, and z in our equation. Then we've got the column vector x, y, z, and then I've called the results here L, M, and N. And the standard procedure then to get x, y, and z is to remove this A. And we do that by pre-multiplying both sides by the inverse of A. Remember, that's denoted by A to the minus 1 here. And we should know that a to the minus 1 times A, the inverse of the matrix A times A, always gives us an identity matrix, which we call I. So that's going to give us this result here. Now remember, the identity matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix. It will have a diagonal of 1s down here, 1, 1, 1, and all the other elements would be zeros. And we should be familiar with the fact that that identity matrix multiplied by x, y, z just gives us x, y, z. Okay, so x, y, z will be equal to the inverse of A multiplied by L, M, and N. L, M, and N, remember, would be these values down here. And so this is the method that we can use when we're looking for a unique solution. We get a unique solution when the determinant of the inverse matrix does not equal zero, okay? So to solve this matrix equation, to get x, y, z, then what we've got is x, y, z equals the inverse of this matrix. You can see I've written that matrix in with a negative one up there, multiplied by 23 minus 1, 25. So I'll take you through the method of doing this. If you've got a calculator, something like this, you might be in calculation mode, okay? So what we'll need to do is clear that. And on this calculator, we'll put it in matrix mode by selecting the menu here. And the matrix mode for this calculator is number four. So we enter four, and then I'm going to define the matrix 
A, okay, as being this one here. So I'll enter one there and it's asking me for the number of rows which is going to be one, two, three. Okay, so we'll put three in there. Now it's asking for the number of columns, which will be one, two, three. Okay, so we've got three columns and it's set this matrix up. And now we've got to start entering our elements. Three, negative five, four across the top. So it's three there, press equals. The cursor's moved across the top. So the next element is negative five. So negative five. Press equals to enter it, and the next element is 4. So press 4 and equal it. And now I'm just going to drop down to the next row, or as it's done automatically, if it hadn't, I could press my cursor keys up here. So if we repeat this, we've got 4 there, then 3, and then negative 2. And once that's entered, we're on the bottom row, which is going to be 2 negative 6 and 5. Okay, so we should have that matrix A set up. I'm also going to set up this column matrix here, 23 minus 1, 25. So if I come out of this, we'll go to Options again, and we're going to define another matrix. So we'll go for 1, Okay, and it's going to be called matrix B now. So I'll put two and we're going to have number of rows, which is going to be one, two, three. Okay, three rows, number of columns, just going to be one column. So I'll press one there and we've got our column matrix. And again, enter those values, 23 in, negative one in, okay, and finally 25. Okay, so we've got those values in. Now, all I'm going to need to do then is multiply the inverse of matrix A with our column matrix B. So I'm going to come out of this by pressing Option, and now we're going to do some matrix calculations. So I'm going to press three, and what I need to do is tell it that we're going to do the inverse of matrix A times the matrix B. So I need to go back to options here and I'm going to select matrix A, so that's 3. I'm going to do the inverse of that, so on this calculator we use this button here, x to the power minus 1, so that's now going to give us the inverse of matrix A and I need to multiply it by, so I put multiply there, matrix B, which was this column matrix here. So we go back to options here and matrix B was number four. Okay, so I press that. So I've got that calculation. Now I can just press equals and up comes our answer. This matrix here, two minus one, three. Okay, so it's saying two because it's highlighting the first element. Well, we can write that in. If we use the calculator then, we've got this matrix here, two minus one, three, and it's telling us that X is two, Y is minus one, and Z is three. So I can put that in there. Okay, that's our summary of results. You can check these out, put those values back in there, and you will get your solution. So this will be our unique solution from a geometrical point of view then is where the three planes would intersect. Now it could be that you don't have a calculator and you need to resort to a more manual way of working out the inverse of a matrix. If that's the case then do go back and check out how to do this in my earlier videos. There's a link in the description below this video. So what is that method? Well Again, I'm assuming that you're familiar with it, but what you would get is this. It's one over the determinant, which turns out to be nine. And then when you work out the cofactors of this matrix and then do the adjoint of it, you'll end up with what we have here. And as you can see, we multiply that then with our column matrix here, 23 minus one, 25. 
And then if you multiply these two matrices together, you'll get this result. And if you do 1 ninth of 18 minus 9 and 27, you'll end up with x, y and z. So a much longer method. So the calculator is preferred if you've got that option. OK, so I've got this second example here that I said you might like to try or you might have had a go at it earlier on. So I'll just give you a short while to pause the video. And when you come back, you might want to fast forward just to check out your answer against mine. OK, so give you a few moments then just to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So in order to solve this then, following a similar method to what we had before, we need to write this set of three linear simultaneous equations in matrix form. And if you do that, you're going to get this result here. 572, coefficients 572 there of x, y and z respectively. And then I've repeated that for each of the other equations. Then you can see we've got 6 minus 2, 2 on the end here. Right, OK, so to get x, y, z then, we need to multiply by the inverse of this matrix here. OK, to both sides, but that's going to leave us with x, y, z equals that inverse matrix times the column matrix 6 minus 2, 2. Now, if you get on your calculator, enter these values in, then what you should find is that you end up with this result here. OK, minus 3, 5, minus 7. And that tells us then that x is minus 3, y is 5 and z is minus 7. And if you had done it by a more formal approach, which is longer, then you would have had this result. OK, your determinant would have been 22 and it would have been 1 over that determinant. Remember to get that inverse of that matrix by working out the cofactors, then the adjoint, you'll end up with this result. Multiplying these two matrices together gives us minus 66, 110 and minus 154. And then if you take 122nd of each of these results, it would take you to this column matrix here, giving us our values for x, y, and z. OK, so I hope you've been able to get that. That's the quick approach then to solving these types of simultaneous linear equations where we have a unique solution. So if you found that useful, do give us a like. And as usual, you might want to subscribe to my YouTube channel to always get updates of anything I upload. OK, so thanks for watching. Bye for now.